Hello and welcome to the What the Fuck Monarchs preview show. Myself, Peter Munsey, joined by that Speedway theme of the year, Mike. It's a guest presenter this week. We have Mike Hunter stepping in for Dave Harley, who's somewhere between Plymouth and Oxford, as we record this on a Tuesday night um, after a wasted trip for what was going to be Plymouth versus Redcar. But Mike, always happy to speak to you. And of course, it's a, a big week ahead for the Monarchs. We record this on Tuesday night by the time it goes out. You may well know how we've got on at Oxford and, and could have punched a playoff space. But after that, it's all eyes on the cup and uh, cup semi-final against Redcar, a team we know well and a team that know Armadale well. So a tough challenge ahead. It is. Uh, it's nice to find the Marks involved once again in the cup semi-final and also going flat out after a play- playoff place as well. It's good to be involved in these things. And uh, there's something about red car I think that everybody likes, like yeah. going to red car. They like seeing the red car riders. And of course, they're the pairs champions now as well. So it's been a good season for red car, and I hope we're going to have a great tie against them. Yeah, and it's, it's one of those things. Also, we'll hear from both camps, as we always do. We've spoke to Sam Masters, who is hoping to make his return on Friday night. Um, but do keep an eye on Monarch's social media just to confirm that as the week progresses. And red car Jason Edwards, of course, on the back of. A busy, or as busy a day as anyone could have when it takes four and a half hours to do 20 heats uh, at Cardiff for the SGP2 on Sunday. And you know, we'll hear from Jason, but for, for me in a cup match, Mike, when, when you're at home first, it's all about building that big lead as possible. Everyone always says 10 points is a minimum, don't they? 12 to 14, you're happy. 16 posture you're ecstatic. That's exactly the Alec uh, Harker's viewpoint, certainly, and he'll have the job of... Uh coaxing the best performance he can out of the team in the first leg. I know he had uh, a tough night when Plymouth were there. That's our last home match. He had to work really hard to get the boys going. Hopefully they're going to be on their best form on Friday. But looking down the red car team, there's no easy points there. So um, they really do have to be at their best, I think, to to get a lead of over 12, which, as you've said, that that's... Uh, Really the target to give us something something to play with down there. Yeah, and of course, red car points that Monarchs traditionally have done well. And as you said, a lot of teams do well. It's, it's probably to the benefit and the annoyance of the, the home promotion and fans. It's such a fair and, and even racetrack. Everyone loves riding there, so it tends to give you some great speedway to watch. But probably has, has been the downfall to, to red car having as much success as they've deserved over the last few years, just because in a two-legged tie, any team feels they can go to red car and get a result as well. So, well, the first leg's always key. I know when I spoke to Jason, he was of the opinion that kind of regardless of what's happened on Friday, he thinks red car can do it in the second leg. I would say the opposite. I would say if, if the Monarchs only came out of it with a slender lead or even a draw or defeat, then they still have a chance to turn it around in that second leg in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, well, these kind of things have happened between the two teams in the past, for sure. Yeah, and of course, uh, both teams, well, one team looking to make a change, but a positive one is the Monarchs, as Sam Masters comes back in at number one, as we, we hope he will. Um, the rest of the team, as expected, pending obviously anyone coming through any guest bookings they may have midweek. And uh, we all know how important Sam is on and off the track. And, you know, regardless of what guess you can get, I'd probably say I'd take a 70 or an 80% fit Sam over 100% of almost anyone else in the league, Mike. So, if he is back, I think that strengthens us no end. Just with, with what he brings to the team and that leadership as well as his point scoring ability. Definitely, there's no doubt about that. His uh, his form has been fantastic, but but his presence is just as much as his point scoring. Uh, I'm sure the other riders perform better when Sam's there. Yep, definitely. And as I say, he is hoping to be back, as he kind of alluded to when I caught up with him earlier. We'll hear from Sam now. So we're joined now by Monarchs captain and number one, Sam Masters. Sam, I guess the uh, the first question, everyone will oh, they'll probably be fed up being asked this. First with your foot, now with your, your shoulders. You know, how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling okay, I suppose. Uh, it's been a rough, rough couple of weeks, really, for me. After a good start of the season, really. So, um, yeah, didn't need this, but it's been a good season so far. So hopefully when I get back on the bike, I'm... I hit the ground running. It. I may not be as comfortable as I was, but after a few minutes, hopefully I'm back in the swing of it and away. Yeah, and I think, I know when we've spoke before, you've said you're probably the worst person in the world at sitting doing nothing, so I must have been driving you up the bend. How have you been keeping yourself busy? 
Oh, yeah, uh, thanks to COVID, I've learned how to sit still, but I'm still not real good at it, to be honest. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's it's not fun, especially when you can see your teams are racing. And um, I've never been to Oxford either, so um, I would have been nice to, to have gone there, uh, in the pairs especially. Uh, especially Josh, I think I thought, I think we could have been the favourites in that. So, um, yeah. It's it sucks for now, but it's part of the part of racing really. So I've just got to cop it on the chin and and uh, soldier on. Yeah, and I guess that's the the only kind of small mercy, if, you know, from, from an Edinburgh point of view anyway. They've, they've kind of managed to keep the keep the ball rolling without you. You know, it was a big big win at home at Plymouth for a big heat fifteen by by the guests Richard Lawson and Kaisey. Um, you know, cup semi now coming up this weekend. So the, the boys have done their job in making sure there's matches there for you when you're ready to get back. Yeah, that's it. It's, uh, the, the boys done awesome against Plymouth, which was cool. Um, but uh, I would have liked to be in there, obviously. But the, they got the job done, and um, yeah, we focus on on the knockout cup. Which hopefully, I can be there for that. Um, yeah, it's like you said. It, I'm not really good at sitting still. It's pretty frustrating. But uh, and, I, and I'd like to just be be on the track for yeah, all my clubs really. Um, the, the, you know, I ain't got that many fixtures left either. So uh, every every match I miss is one less I'm going to have at the end of the year. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back. The boys are doing a good job, but uh, I feel like I should uh, be there playing my part and and uh, scoring points for the club. Yep, and obviously we we speak just now on kind of Tuesday dinner time. Still, you know, maybe not 100 percent to be back for Friday, but. Either way, you know, it'll be a tough match for the Monarchs Red Car, a, a pretty solid team. We've just seen them bring Kyle Newman in at the bottom end, you know, that, that'll strengthen them up. And Richard Lawson, guess for Edgar Riss, so they don't really miss anything from Rissy's point of view, point scoring wise. And then, you know, we've just seen how good Charles and Louis are riding when they won the pairs on Friday. So everyone will need to be at the top of their game on Friday night once again. Yeah, that's it. And they've got some guys that don't mind coming into Armadale as well. So it's going to, yeah, that makes it tough. Uh, Louis and, and Charles are on a high from the. Um, from their yeah, victory over last week, so um, we're gonna have to hit them hard. Uh, you know, our boys have been going pretty good around Armadale and starting. We're all starting to get. Well, I've been there for a while, so not myself, but um, all the other guys are starting to get really used to the track. Uh, Kai's, yeah, he's coming on really strong. He's getting better every every week, really, which is nice to see. And um, the other boys that, that the new guys this year. As well as starting to love the track, um, Paco had an awesome meeting there a couple of weeks ago. So hopefully he can he can do that and take the pressure off off me at the top. I I don't mind the pressure normally, but yeah, the injury is uh, I'm, I'm being injured at the minute, so life ain't as easy to to win races. But I'm going to come and do my best anyway, and hopefully I can make five good starts and yeah, bob and weave, and they're going to pass me then. So, Mike, it'll be a big boost, as we say, to the Monarchs if Sam Masters comes back. If we flip it over to the red car side of pits, there's been a further change in their lineup and the experienced uh, and former Plymouth number one back in his day, wasn't he? In the league, Kyle Newman uh, comes in to replace Kyle Bickley. Um, so, while that'll be an interesting one, Newman's been out for probably about six to eight weeks now, at least, since he took that shoulder injury um, for Oxford. So, it'll be interesting to see if he can hit the ground running, but with the form Bickley was showing, definitely doesn't weaken red car at all. And if Newman is on fire, it makes him a whole lot stronger at that bottom end. I've always liked Kyle Newman. He's a real trier. But I wouldn't call him an Armadale specialist. No. Uh, I'm sure he would agree with that. <laughs> but he's certainly a guy that can battle his way around. And on a track like red car, I don't know what his record is there, but I would expect him to go pretty well there. He used to be really good around Somerset. Yeah. And uh, of course, red car the wedge from the front, very much so by Charles Wright. Um, we care and normally our rest Eric does miss out and it's Richard Lawson that steps in the guest now, Eric was fantastic at Armadale earlier in the season but I wouldn't really say that weakens him any when you see not Richard Lawson's performance for the Monarchs against Plymouth of course he was part of that Heat 15 duo that, that got the 5-1 to take us to victory in that one and uh, those are three guys that will need some due particularly as we've touched on already Charles Wright and Lewis Kerr flying high after deservedly Mize winning the pairs at Oxford last week yeah, well, these two plus plus Lawson is a very strong heat leader trio and uh, all the more reason why we want to have our best top two, Masters and Pickering, 
because our usual method is for them to dominate matches and uh, the others to pick up enough points. Well, that's not going to be easy uh, against the three riders that Redcar have got. Yep, and of course, though, you know, in any cup, it's a seven-man team, and there's you, you mentioned it earlier, Mike, there's, on paper, there's not a weakness in that Redcar team. You know, Casper Anderson was surprisingly poor at Armadale in the season, but had two double-digit returns to his name before that. Jason Edwards, of course, well, half a dozen or so matches for the Monarchs last year, and Jordan Jenkins, who watched to a maximum in the National League earlier in the season. So, as we often say when we're doing the, the commentary, you look down the heats to come in the programme and, and you do wonder where the advantages are going to come from. And the Monarchs will certainly need to be sharp to get any, and, and what is a pretty solid, uh, while well, putting at the top, but solid front lineup. Certainly is, yeah. I mean, as well as the three strong heat leaders, I've got four other guys who can be good, but are not always good. Yeah. So uh, that that that's similar with us, really. We've got several riders that can be good and are not always good. So <laughs> it really depends what these question mark riders can do on both sides. Yep, and one of them that is looking forward to the meeting on Friday is Jason Edwards. I caught up with him earlier in the week just to speak about how his season's going and uh, look forward to Friday night's match. So, Jason, um, obviously, KO Cup semi-final on Friday night, first leg at Armadale and the second leg to fall at home and, and I guess in any two legged cup tie the you know it's it's just score as many points as you can, isn't it, in the first leg you maybe even more crucial for a red car though. Everyone loves the red car track, so you tend to find sometimes in, in two legged ties, you know, the away team can come to red car and score points. So that makes the, the away leg for the Bears all the more important to if not win the night then then definitely keep it very, very close. Yeah, and again, like the playoff, the whole thing where playoffs are, it's over two legs, so it don't matter how much you win your first leg by, you've still got to be good away, and that's that's the bit that Edinburgh's got in their advantage. And obviously, me spending a little bit of time last year there. I mean, it was the last heat decider there last year when Richie and was it, I think it was Sam went out and beat the Glasgow two, and then that was that. But you wouldn't have thought that, but it's just because we managed to keep it close at Glasgow, so. Yeah, I know Edinburgh ran red car really close at the start of the year, but it was a day meeting. And the track was ploughed really deep and it probably suited a lot of the Edinburgh riders. So, yeah, no, ho- hopefully it can go in red cars way as much as uh, everyone listening to this will think, no, I don't want that. But, um, no, it should be a really good little meeting and it gives us another chance to go to Edinburgh because I know we struggled there at the start of the year. Um, but, no, I'm just looking at it. We get some more meetings in and, um, yeah, both sides should be at full strength as well, which hasn't really happened this year too much for any team. So, um, that should be good just for the crowd point of view and speedway in general. Yep, yeah, and, and you mentioned that the officer red car <clears throat> made a, a recent change. They've, they've brought Kyle Newman in, very experienced guy. And, you know, he's you look through his honours list for his time at Pool, even in the elite league and stuff. He he knows what it's all about come the, the crucial end of the season. So, you know that red car obviously just won the pairs just just before Cardiff there. So there'll be a real feel good factor about the club going into the, the business end of the season. Yeah, obviously I I weren't there at Oxford, but I just had it. I was just listening to BSN on the way to Cardiff, and yeah, Louis and Charles did the business, and yeah, I mean that that shows how good the top end of the team is. I know obviously the pairs there was a couple of teams like like Edinburgh, they weren't at their, their strongest, but you can only beat who's in front of you on the night, and Charles and Louis did that. And for someone like Louis, I know he mentioned it, he hasn't he hasn't got any honours in league wise, so he's been around a little while now, so he fully deserves that and everything, and. Um, yeah, like I say, I, obviously Carl coming in, obviously I've spent a little bit of time with him when I've been at Eastbourne and whatnot, but he obviously hasn't ridden for a while, so hopefully the matches at Plymouth and wherever else we are, they'll get him in good stead for it. Um, but I mean, you've only got, he's, he's done quite a bit in it, and so Red Car has the opportunity to strengthen up, so you can't blame him for doing that, and obviously it shows that we've, we're serious about getting in these playoffs and doing well. So, no, like I say, we're at Edinburgh, anything can happen at Edinburgh. But at the same time, Edinburgh haven't had um, the biggest of home up wins like they normally do. I know the recent meetings we've seen and whatnot, they haven't been the 60-30s that they always used to be. So, um, yeah, ho- hopefully we can hit the ground running. And um, no, it should be a really good two meetings. Yeah, and then obviously you mentioned it there. Maybe by the time that this goes out, that the results from, from Red Cars matches this week in the league will be known. But, you know, a lot of, a lot of big matches coming up ahead. Cup, you know, the chase for the playoffs, then into the playoffs, and I guess from your point of view, and we spoke a little bit before we started recording here, you know, never been busier, but but that, you ask any speedway rider, that's what they want, so you must be loving life just now, basically just knowing 
you know, five days a week and maybe maybe more, you're going to be out there jumping on the bike and doing what you love doing. Yeah, it's literally, literally every day. And that, that's that been the the really good thing this year is I've just been riding all the time. Even even like the whole Cardiff thing, that I was only going to be watching and then suddenly I'm in the meeting. Do you know what I mean? Getting guest bookers wherever we can. But that that's the idea. You're only going to get better riding. And that's what's been nice, kind of how the fixtures worked out this year. Every Sunday I've near enough been at Mildenhall. Every Friday we've near enough been at Redcar. And then every tra- away track in between. Um, but yeah, no, like I say, hope we still need obviously red card. Obviously, when this comes out, we'll know a bit more. But we still need some big meetings in the week um, to try and get in the playoffs because that's still the the bottom line. We need to try and do that, and we need extra meetings. But again, the nature of a knockout cup is is two two meetings, and then you can get another two, and then do you know what I mean? So this being a semi final. We're so close to getting in the final. You don't want to miss out on that bit. But no, it's like I say, it's been absolutely brilliant this year for me, and it's kind of shown in my scores. And even my average is pretty much the same away as it is at home. So I've been been quite happy with that because I'm not just a one track um, person. So yeah, no, like I say, it's it's been brilliant for me, and that's what was nice with last year. I got to ride at Edinburgh, got to do all the up, guards go loads of times, Edinburgh loads of times, and yeah, it's, it was brilliant like that. Yeah, and that was, that was kind of what I was going to my next question. I, I don't know if you're the kind of guy that, that kind of waits till the season's finished to look back or, or kind of just keeps a track of where you're going. But, you know, you think back to, to 12 months ago, you, you were unattached in the championship, picking up guest bookings and, and you did guest a lot for Edinburgh towards the end, you mentioned. And now, you know, in August to be out there in front of however many thousands of people were at Cardiff, scoring points, beating guys that are riding in Polish elite leagues and, and that kind of thing. It must just be absolutely incredible to think of, of what's changed and how far you've come in the last 12 months yeah this time last year I've been dropped by two teams um, and just trying to get a ride somewhere um, but like I said that's what's been not, like I say, been nice this year it's just the amount of means I've been able to do and also the way my average has been I've still kind of been just below the bit where everyone is so it meant I could guess for less than five six times and just generally anyone and but I wouldn't have thought I'd get a chance to have a go in the top league either. Do you know what I mean? I'm yep. just trying to get my free rides and trying to get a point here and there and just getting dragged along going to tracks you never go to. So, um, yeah, like I say, the whole Cardiff thing was just an absolutely amazing opportunity just to have a go at it. Do you know what I mean? Um, I, I don't think I did myself any harm. Um, I got a couple of points and whatnot. And obviously the track was a bit more motocross-like, but it, it's just an experience that I, no one can really say they've done it. So that's for, for me, was really a, just a cool thing just to get to be part of and have a go at. Um, and even there, it was just, right, you're out. Someone's broke the tapes, someone's broke the tapes and, and whatnot. So, yeah, like I say, it, this year's been brilliant for me and that's what's been nice is it's just been next meeting, next meeting, next meeting, rather than looking back and waiting around. It's, right, next one's tomorrow, next one's tomorrow. So... Um, yeah, that, that's what's for me. Jason Edwards there, Mike, and a kid we all enjoyed having in the Monarchs fold last season, and, and dare I say it, we would have loved him back this year. Um, I think geography probably played as big a part as any, and Edwards not being part of the Monarchs camp, and we'll need to hope that the guys that are in the team can make it look like that was the right decision come the end of Friday night. Well, certainly. I mean, of the, of the we, we wanted Jason Edwards, we wanted Drew Kemp, and we wanted Richie Worrell. But if I'd been told last year that we could only have one of these three, I would have chosen Jason Edwards, to be honest. Um, but we didn't get any of them as it happened, so <laughs> there we are. Yep, so, as we've mentioned, tough lineup throughout. Monarchs, hopefully, their normal 1-7. to seven. Red car, 6 of their normal 7, with Richard Lawson stepping in for out risk. Tapes will be up at half 7 on Friday. And, of course, tickets are available on the Monarchs website, edinburghmonarchs.co.uk, and click on the Buy Tickets link. If you can't make it along, the match will be live streamed also. Again, it's edinburghmonarchs.co.uk, then click on EMTV to purchase your link for that. Mike, first leg of the cup. I would always say you can never win a cup tie in the first leg, but you can certainly lose it. You know, So the Monarchs will need to be aware of that. If they're to go down by 6 or 8 or 10, even with the most optimistic of us, would think that would be a struggle at red car. Um, so it's, it's probably a match that, that either team's looking to Certainly, red card. We're going to keep close. Monarchs hoping for a big win, and then we'll see where it takes us in a couple of weeks' time. I'm certainly looking forward to it very much. <laughs> well, before we finish up here, um, as always, we delve back into your archives, Mike, and 
see some of them behind you there. That's just a smidgen of, I'm sure, uh, what's held in that treasure trove there. But we'll go back to, is it 1994 for this one, Mike? 1994, it was a previous cup final involving the Monarchs and the Bears. A uh, uh, cup semi-final, I should say, and uh, it was a lot of good racing. It was a, it was a very good meeting, I remember it well, and uh, this was just one of the heats worth watching. Yep, and we'll see that now. In gate two, Paul Bentley's in gate three, and Kenny McKenna really riding superbly. He goes from gate number four. Edinburgh lead by ten, but looking down the heats to come, there's still a lot of work to do. They're eight ahead on aggregate, and this will be a crucial one once again. And it's so very tight. McKenna, I think, to the first corner. Swings very wide there. Can he hang on? Down the back straight, he has done. McKenna leads. Les Collins in amongst the Middlesbrough men. Neil Collins in second. Paul Bentley's got round Les Collins into third, but Bentley's awkwardly positioned on the outside. Les is through into third now. Pressing Neil Collins fiercely. Bentley coming back again round the outside. Kenny McKenna just hanging on from Neil. Can't afford a mistake. Swings down tightly, and Bentley's got inside Les Collins there. Brilliant riding by Bentley, he's taken Les. They're still fighting for every point. Les is back inside Bentley again. Can he get through here on the last corner? Racing hard inside Paul Bentley. And it's Les Collins takes the third. Magnificent riding by Les Collins. What a superb third place that was. He fought fiercely to the line. And he got it. So, fingers crossed for a repeat of that come Friday night, that kind of action. And hopefully, I can put my boy and gold glasses and cap on for this one. to be a bit biased. Nice big first lead league for the Monarchs to take down to Teesside in a couple of weeks. Myself and Dave will be back to the Friday Focus on Saturday morning. Um, but until then, as always, EdinburghMonarchs.co.uk. Buy tickets is your link for the tickets. You can pay cash at the gate also. And EMTV is your link on the Ember Monarchs website for the stream. But until myself and Mike are back streaming that match, then myself and David back with the focus. As always, thanks for watching and goodbye. <laughs>